All right, YouTube, welcome back. Uh, thanks again for stopping in and checking out the channel. Uh, if you watched the last video, you saw that we uh, tore apart the 450. We got some parts over here. Um, while I didn't have the video camera out, uh, I don't know if you guys remember, we checked the valves and the intake valves were a little tight. So I did order new intake valves. I don't know if you guys can tell or not, probably not, but these are starting to get a little sharp out here. They're starting to tulip a little bit right here on the edges. This one's probably a little worse. Um, but yeah, you guys can't really tell too much, but it's basically getting a knife edge here. Like I said, the valves are starting to tulip a little bit, and that's why they're getting tight. Um, so I went ahead, took the head off, of course. Um, and while the head was off i cleaned everything all up and i uh, put new intake valves in there cleaned all the ports you know got them all cleaned back up uh, so like i said that's all good to go now um and then while i have them on the bench i generally also set the valves um so i went ahead and did that while it was here but and like I said, setting the valves on these are actually pretty easy. Uh, so let's show you here. And basically what I ran into was with the new valves, I was just a little bit tight. Um, like I said, I like to try and run them about five thousandths. And uh, like I said, here's the five thousandths. Go ahead and you can feel a little bit of drag. Over here is five thousandths. It goes in. A little bit of drag on there so I would call those five because let's try six here six doesn't really go in so like I said I don't generally try and aim for five but uh, anyhow like I said when I was putting these in the uh, intakes they were actually at about three thousandths so what I do is let me grab some stuff here real quick. All right, so we got the shim kit. Like I said, my valves were at uh, three thousandths and I wanted them at five. So basically you pull this shim out and what I do is I'll measure it. So this shim is 82 thousandths. And so like I said, we were at three and I needed to be at five. So if that one's at 82 or 83, then I need to find one that's about 81 or 80. So I said we'll put that back in there and then basically you gotta subtract what you need to be at. So that one would be 79, so. And basically that's all you gotta do. So as long as your valves are a little, you have clearance, you can figure out where you need to go pretty much on the first try. Um, like I said, it's actually pretty easy to set these valves. Uh, first time you do it, it's a little tricky, but once you've done it a couple times, you get used to it. Um, so like I said, we got that all back together. Um, where we're at now is, of course, I was to leave this set on here for now because I don't want the shims to fall out. Um, but here's the old piston. Um, here's the new piston. Let's go ahead and open that box up. Um, all right. There's the rings. Um, piston pin. Piston. So, like I said, this is a Wiseco 14 to 1 piston. Um, they're actually very nice pistons. Um, it's a single compression ring. Uh, it's not a dual compression. So basically there's an oil ring and one compression ring. Um, so like I said, we need to get that in there. Um, we got the old one out. I got a new base gasket on there already. Pull the old piston out. Um, so I guess where we're at is I need to get the rings 
on here. And then what I like to do is I also like to put the piston in there. Yeah, and of course I'll uh, measure the ring end gap on these two before I do anything. But I need to get the piston in. And then also I'll generally try and put the piston in out here on the bench. And I got a little more room to work with it. And I can get the, the rings in right there. And then I'll put the, the pin through a little bit basically on one side and then I'll try and put this whole thing down over and then slide it through the rod that way I'm not trying to fight the rings and everything down in there but you have to make sure you put the piston in right so basically the way I always do it is your tensioner is on the intake side and your valve relief your bigger relief is going to be your intake valves if it don't have an arrow a lot of times I have an arrow or something on there going to the front but your intake valves are your bigger relief, so you put the intake valves on the same side as the cam tensioner. So, there's that. Um, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and file these ring gaps, make sure they're all right. And then I'll get the rings in, and we'll get this piston slid down on and get cylinder on. So. Alright guys, so I got lucky. I didn't have to do any kind of ring filing which most of the time I don't have to on these. So, but uh, Wiseco gives you a nice little chart here. Um, basically what your ring gap should be. Um, so they tell you to take the bore, which is in inches times, you know, 0 0.0040 to get your ring end gap. So my bore is a 94 millimeter bore. Um, so comes out to 3.70. When you times that by the 0 .004 that they want you to come up with about 14 to 15 thousandths for the ring end gap and i put mine in there and checked it and i'm almost exactly right at 15 so like i said wiseco is pretty good about it uh, I've, i don't know that i've ever actually had to file any of theirs but i always like to check uh, of course i already got the rings on there um, but generally what i also do here since they sent me an extra ring for it. Um, I'll end up using, I'll set the ring in there and uh, a lot of times I use the piston and I'll have like the oil ring on there and I use that to set it down and square it up and then take your measurement. Um, but that's all I do. Um, so like I said I've already got one uh, pin clip in here I got the pin in there, so like I said, I'll put this down in there, and then we'll be ready to throw this on there. And also, like I said, Wiseco, I, they do have an arrow. You can kind of tell right there. They have an arrow on theirs. Um, kind of hard to see, but there is one there. So like I said, this basically is going to go in this way now. Um, and then the other thing, they're pretty good about telling you your ring positions so like I said there's that there um, but like I said we're ready to go ahead and slide this baby down in there So the piston's in there. Uh, 
next thing to do I guess is get the head gasket and get the head and stuff bolted on so I'll go ahead and do that As you saw there, I got the cylinder head back on. Struggled a little bit there also. Um, just must be my theme for tonight, just struggle. Um, anyhow, there's a dowel pin over here on this corner of the head that was stuck in the head. I tried to get it out and it got a little messed up, so I'm pretty sure that's what was holding me up. But like I said, I just used a little rubber mallet, tapped it down, it seemed to go all right. Um, got the cylinder head torqued, and uh, like I said, I normally torque it uh, in like three or four stages. I normally go up by 10 foot pounds each time. So I normally, normally torque it to about 40 foot pounds. Uh, so I always go 10, 20, 30, 40. Um, and that's how I generally torque it. And then as you saw, I got the cam tower on, got those torqued, uh, like to torque those to 89 inch pounds. And then after that, uh, which you guys didn't see, uh, rotated it, you pull this timing plug, rotate it over till you see the top dead center. Now you'll see a line with an F, which is where it fires. And then right after that's a line with a T, which is top dead center. And you want to time it up on the T. So make sure you have the T lined up with the little groove right there. And then easiest way, for me is the bolts go 6 and 12 o'clock or the gears, the lines on the gear are kind of parallel with the head. So like I said, I don't have the tensioner in there right now so there's a little bit of slop in it and it's kind of hard to see but it's actually timed up. It may seem like it's off a tooth but then once you put the tensioner in it kind of rolls back, it puts tension on the back of this chain and then it'll pull everything back. So if you move it one way, you'll see that you're off pretty far the other way. So generally, like I said, six and 12 o'clock is where I put my bolts. It's kind of easiest to tell. Um, like I said, you can actually put this on. If you actually drop the cam gear in here and hold it by these bolts or the hole and get that right up at 12 o'clock and then slide it on there and then you can spin the cam over and get that lined up. So. That's the easiest way for me. Um, so like I said, now I'll get this tensioner in and get the valve cover on and uh, we'll see what else we can do from there. All right, as you see, we got the valve cover, got the tensioner on. Um, I'm just gonna set you guys up on a time lapse probably. I'll uh, got to throw the motor mount in, hook these coolant lines up. Uh, get the exhaust on, get the fuel tank, carburetor, that kind of stuff on. Um, so I'll just go ahead and do all that real quick. Like I said, I'll probably put you guys on a time lapse. The uh, plan is to potentially fire it up, get a heat cycle through it tonight, let it cool down. And then tomorrow, we'll probably fire it up and get another heat cycle in it, let it cool down. And then I'll go ahead and change the oil and everything in it. So, uh, but, so anyhow said I'll set you guys up over here and get after it.
it most of the way back together. Um, I got the tank. It's just sitting on there. Uh, like I said, I kind of wanted to hurry up and get fired up before it got too late. It's already about 10 o'clock, maybe 10.30. So I don't want to piss off too many neighbors, but I also want to get a heat cycle in it. So like I said, here we go. And this will be the first kick on this thing. So let's see how she does on the first kick of the new build. All right guys, sorry about that. The GoPro battery died right as soon as I kicked it. Um, but it did fire up first kick. And just so you guys don't think I'm bullshitting, I'll do it one more time. guys go my engine is all back together I uh, just got buttoned up some other little things and I also went and got the rest of the parts that I stole off of it for the loaner bike that I've been running the TT races with so I'll be throwing my axle and shocks and stuff back on it here this week too so like you said once again guys thanks for watching and make sure you guys hit the subscribe button on there because like i said that helps my channel out a lot and also make sure you guys are leaving me a comment let me know what you guys think so we'll catch you guys in the next one thanks again for watching